Hello guys, welcome back to the Eat Like Ruby podcast. Welcome to the Eat Like Ruby podcast if you are here for the first time. This is probably actually the most perfect episode for someone to listen to for the first time. What I'm going to talk about today, guys, I'm here solo. By the way, I said last week that I'm just loving the solos. I'm just going to keep those rolling for a while. So I'm here solo today and I'm going to talk about what I would advise if you are just like day one, don't know what you're doing, quite lost with nutrition, if you're a bit negative, if you're feeling a bit down and out, just really trying to find your groove and you haven't found it, I'm going to talk to you today and what I would advise. I feel like we've done this in the past, but I don't feel like we've done it for a while. We've had a lot of chats recently about more sort of specific things with nutritional training. Um, We've done a lot of the muscle gain chats, so many different things. And I just feel like let's just do a big kind of like beginner. This is what I would advise just to if you are feeling some of those things, like I said, a bit lost, negative, etc., what I would advise to break through that and get the ball rolling in the direction that you want to go. I do not have any notes. I do not have anything at all today. This is coming straight from the Ruby brain. So we'll see <laughs> how good it is and we'll go from there. I feel like if you're an OG listener, there's probably going to be a lot of things you might have heard before because nutrition is nutrition. It actually hasn't changed since last year, believe it or not. Science is still science. So there's going to be a lot of repetition here. And obviously, if you're someone who is a little bit ahead of this and you have kind of found your groove, first of all, that's fucking awesome. But this could even just be a cool episode to listen to and think, like almost check the boxes and go, yep, I'm doing that. Yep, I'm doing that. And just kind of know that you're on the right track. It might be a good episode to listen to, to refer to someone. If you've got a friend or someone who's a bit lost and you think, oh my God, they need to hear this, please do so. Share it, tag us, like it, rate it, send it to your mate, send it to your mum, do whatever you got to do. Um, but I just want this to be quite helpful for a beginner. So what I'm going to speak to, first of all, if you are new, one of my most used and abused sayings is there is no right or wrong. So (laughs) I'm the biggest advocate of there is no right or wrong with nutrition because what's right for one person and what's right for someone else is going to look very different. What's right for someone pursuing a fat loss goal is going to be different to what's right for someone pursuing muscle gain, someone pursuing performance, someone pursuing healthy habits. There can be so many different directions we can take our nutrition in and it's just super important to Like I always say, and if you're new, you won't know, but (laughs) one thing I always say is I'm the biggest fan of education. The number one value in Eat Like Ruby is education and clarity and structure and just people actually knowing if I do want to pursue fat loss, this is how I do it. If I do want to pursue muscle gain, this is how I do it. If I want to pursue anything at all, just actually having the baseline knowledge. You don't have to go off and study. You don't have to do anything crazy, but my number one drive is that people just actually understand, okay, I want to pursue this thing. This is how I do it. And if we think about those initial comments I made about people feeling quite lost and desperate and negative and just fed up, that it, the underlying thing there is they just don't know. And I say that with nothing but love and respect because you don't know what you don't know. But if you're in a position where you think, I've been busting my ass, I've been trying to get somewhere and I'm not getting there, I my number one thing is get enough of a base of education and just the foundation and the fundamentals of nutrition to actually understand why you're not achieving that thing and what is required for you to achieve the thing you want to be achieving. On that note, and the reason I brought up the no right or wrong comment is because we can literally use nutrition to pursue so many different goals. I'm going to speak predominantly today to body composition and probably more so fat loss than anything because I think I don't think anyone, well, actually I shouldn't say that, but for like gen pop and as a whole, I think people struggle with, I don't know how to achieve fat loss a lot more than they struggle with, I don't know how to achieve weight gain. So I'm going to speak predominantly today to body comp and to fat loss and really just the basic baseline shit that we need to know and understand and start implementing to get the ball rolling with that. I've said this thing so many times in my life that it pretty much just comes out of my mouth on like a scripted autopilot. But to explain very basically the science of fat loss, fat loss is achieved when we're in a calorie deficit. A calorie deficit is an energy deficit. So when we think about that, if we don't know, When we consume food and drink, that contains calories and calories are energy. So when we consume food and drink, we take in energy into our body. 
our body obviously then uses energy every day to train, to walk, to run, to clean the house, to do anything at all. Our body is obviously using up energy to do those things. If we give the body more energy than it uses for the day, it puts the excess in storage. If we don't give it enough, so we give the body a certain amount, but then it uses even more, it pulls excess energy out of storage. This is how fat loss is achieved because body fat is stored energy. So if we consume a certain amount of food and drink, aka a certain amount of calories, aka a certain amount of energy, our body takes that energy in, we go about our day, we do our whatever we're doing, the body uses the energy that it needs to to do those things. If there is excess, it shoots it off into storage. That storage is body fat. Excess energy becomes stored body fat. If we then think about a person wanting to achieve fat loss and remove some of that stored body fat, we need to remove the stored energy. Therefore, if we think about everything I just said, we want to give the body less energy than it needs every day. So it starts pulling some out of storage. This is literally how fat loss is achieved. If you never take anything else from me, take that comment. If you are someone who is lost with fat loss, that is actually the scientific factual way that fat loss occurs. If we think about the extreme amount of diets in the world, there are so many diets in the world. Most of them are effective if they're effective because of the energy deficit that is put in place. If we think about somebody cutting out carbs, cutting out sugar, cutting out bread, cutting out fat, anything at all, if you cut out a large amount of food and you don't let yourself eat that food anymore, by default, we therefore cut out a lot of calories and a lot of energy. This is why if you have done an extreme diet and you've seen usually temporary fat loss or weight loss, it's because of that. You've cut something out, therefore we've removed a huge amount of calories and energy, the body started to pull some out of storage because it needs it. We start to get the ball rolling with fat loss. The reason I said that is temporary is because usually what happens there, and I've said this a lot in other episodes. So if you're new and you're like, fuck, I need to know all this stuff. You just got to go back and binge the pod because we explain all of this in a lot more detail. But usually the reason we have temporary success with a extreme diet or a restrictive diet is two reasons. One, we actually just hit a point where we're like, fuck, this sucks. I'm not doing it anymore. Or two, we don't consciously go into that fuck, this sucks energy, but we do just start to bring in a few other little things here and there. So if we think about a person who has maybe cut out sugar, initially you've made that big cut out of all those foods you're eating that had sugar in them. Therefore, you've removed a ton of calories from your day. You start to get the ball rolling with fat loss. You then start to, over time, look for things that you can bring in that would, because you're like, oh, I can't have my chocolate, I can't have my biscuits, I can't have that. So I'm looking for other little snacks I can have throughout the day. Let's say we've removed, just as a pure example, 500 calories worth of sugary foods, sat with that for a while, therefore we've got quite a nice little calorie deficit in place. Fat loss has started to occur, weight loss has started to occur. We then start to get a bit over it cravings kick in, temptation kicks in, snackiness kicks in and we start to find other things that aren't sugary because we want to stick to our no sugar thing and we bring them in. If we bring in 500 calories worth of those foods, we've just bridged that gap. We've removed 500 calories from sugar or any food that we've decided to cut out. If we've then decided to bring in something else in its place, we're still in the same position with the calories and this is where a lot of people can stall and this is where we see so many people fall into that mindset of but I eat well, but I eat good, I eat healthy and I'm not getting anywhere. If we think about somebody, quote, eating healthy, a healthy day can still absolutely leave us in a position where we've consumed enough energy and enough calories that we don't have to pull any out of storage and we therefore don't drop any excess weight. If we really think about everything I just said, if fat loss is achieved through a calorie deficit, aka pulling excess calories out of storage, if we are giving the body enough, it's not going to pull them out of storage. All food and drink contain calories. So no matter how healthy or well or clean or anything at all we're eating, if there's enough calories in our day that the body doesn't have to pull any from storage, it won't. Therefore, fat loss and weight loss will never occur. And that's such a common cause of people, like I said, falling into that loophole of I'm eating so well and I'm not getting anywhere. So if we want to look at tangibles, the number one thing that I advise everyone to do is to get a basic 
understanding of calories. And this convo could go in so many directions because people then start to be like, do I have to count calories? Do I have to track my food? Do I have to do that forever? Do I have to weigh food? You don't have to do anything. Do what you want. But if you are lost and constantly trying all these crazy things, it's so funny because people will try so many crazy diets. And then when we just say, spend a month really learning about calories, people are like, fuck, do I have to do that? Again, you don't have to do anything. Go away. Do what you want. I don't care. But (laughs) if you are lost and you're spinning your wheels, really the number one question to ask yourself is, do I know how many calories I'm consuming every day? And do I have an idea of my maintenance calories, my deficit calories, anything like that? If we think about everything I've just said, there's going to be an amount of calories that you could eat every day that would leave you in a deficit and therefore achieving fat loss and weight loss. There's going to be an amount as we increase that, that becomes your maintenance calories. And therefore, if you eat that, you're eating around maintenance, not much is going into storage, not much is coming out of storage. Everything's just maintaining and standing still. And then if we continue to eat even more, eventually we go into what we call a calorie surplus where there's more energy coming in than the body's actually using for the day that's when it starts storing the excess and we see weight gain and body fat gain continue to occur. So if you're a person who is just like pulling their hair out, I don't fucking know why I can't lose weight. I'm so lost. I've tried everything. The number one thing I would ask yourself is, do I know how many calories I'm consuming? And do I truly know? Because that is a whole nother question and a whole nother arena. If you are someone who has come in to eat like Ruby or you've started flexible dieting, tracking food, et cetera, it's so common to not have realized how much you're eating or how little you're eating or where you're falling or super common things that we've spoken about before where maybe we do actually eat a pretty good amount during the week, but then our weekends are crazy, our nights out are crazy, anything at all. If you can't actually say, I know this is how much calories and energy I'm taking in, then we can't actually say I should be getting X, Y, Z result because it is actually, it does actually come down to the maths and the science and the facts. And obviously then we need to factor in that we are human beings and we're going to have events and different days and things we need to navigate with our nutrition. But the actual baseline fundamentals of whether we achieve fat loss and weight loss or not is a calorie deficit or energy balance, as we call it. If we think about the term energy balance, just as a little bit of a side note to explain that, calories are energy. So really that's like saying calorie balance. And again, the concept of energy balance is just understanding calories in, calories out. Do I know roughly how much is going in, roughly how much is coming out and therefore what an actual calorie deficit would look like for me? What maintenance calories would look like for me, etc. And when we have this information, there is literally so many directions we can take our nutrition. And this is what I fucking love about Eat Like Ruby. I'm not even going to lie, but <laughs> this is literally what I love about Eat Like Ruby and why I love that term. There's no right or wrong, because I think when a person truly understands nutrition and calories and everything I just spoke about, you actually have the knowledge, the skill and the ability and the confidence to take your nutrition in any direction you want to. And that shit is literally life-changing. And what I mean there is, if you've done a little bit of work to really understand the science and the facts about everything I just said, but then also apply that science and those facts to you personally and see where it all actually lands for you and how it can be implemented for you, you can then take your nutrition and your physique and your goals and everything in any direction. If you know that stuff well enough to say, if I ever want to achieve fat loss, I know what that looks like for me. If I ever want to maintain, I know what that looks like for me. If a person has had a phase of tracking and they've started to understand this stuff and then they go, side note, when we say tracking, I feel like we just use that term so loosely because it's so common in my world. But when we talk about tracking, we talk about tracking food. So actually starting to monitor how many calories we're eating, what it's all adding up to, what it actually factually looks like. That's what we mean when we say tracking. If you have had a phase of tracking and really started to understand this stuff, you can then be like, okay, cool. I don't need to track my food forever, but I actually understand what a quote good day looks like for me. I think there are so many people that spend time eating good, air quotes, 
but not truly actually knowing, is that good for you and your goal? It's very easy to just sort of look at healthy foods and go, you know, this is quote good for me and it can absolutely have health benefits. There's a very big difference between a food having health benefits versus a food being good for your body composition goal. And they can absolutely overlap. Don't get me wrong. And if you're in Eat Like Ruby, you know that this is literally what we focus on. We look at the quality and the health benefits of food. We also then look at the quantity of food required to achieve your goal. And we come up with a plan to implement both of those things. So we've got good quality food promoting health and we've got it in the right amount to achieve your body composition goal. That is literally my jam. That is what I love. That shit, like I said, is life-changing. And once you know that, what I was actually getting at there (laughs) before I went off topic, once you've tracked food for a while and you've started to really understand what that looks like for you and you've got a visual of it, you can absolutely move away from tracking. We don't need to record our food forever. We don't need to log our food forever. But if you've done it for a while and you can clearly say like, I know what a well-balanced day looks like for me. I know what my portion sizes should roughly look like. I know how many meals I should be having. Like there's so many little pieces that you'll start to just see. Okay, cool. This is how I actually personally piece together a good day to suit me and my goals. Again, I'm going to say it one more time. That shit is life changing. And like I was saying there, one of the biggest things we work on in Eat Like Ruby is really finding that sweet spot with the quality and the quantity of food. But In all honesty, I'm going to say one thing that people can take and I wouldn't advise this, but this is actually factually true. The quantity of food we eat, aka how much, will be the deciding factor of whether we achieve fat loss or not. If we think about everything I've just said, we could have the best quality day of food, so many nutrients, so many health benefits, etc. If that was a really high calorie day, And side note, when you do track food for a while and you start to understand this stuff, you can see that so many, quote, healthy foods can still be high in calories. And again, it comes back to what I said before. It's such a common reason that people don't achieve results because they think, well, fuck, I'm eating so healthy. But when you actually start to do the math, it's like that healthy day really adds up. If it adds up so much that it doesn't leave you anywhere near a calorie deficit, you're never going to achieve fat loss no matter how fucking healthy you're eating. So if we bring it back to where I was going... The number one thing that has to be in place and the only thing that actually has to be in place to achieve weight loss or weight gain is the quantity of food. Again, that energy deficit or the energy surplus, leaving us in that position at the end of every day, repetitively, consistently over time to actually have an energy deficit or an energy surplus in place. If we really think about that, quantity and the amount of food we eat is the number one thing needed and the only thing needed for that. So like I said, I absolutely am not advising this, but we could eat the worst quality of food. And if it was in the right amount to leave us in the position that we need to be in, we can actually pursue and work towards a weight loss or weight gain goal. Obviously, we just know for health reasons, that's not something we want to do. But when you actually do get into nutrition and tracking food and understanding this stuff, you'll see pretty quickly that it doesn't leave you in a good position. If you had to have, let's say, for example, if you're pursuing, if you wanted to pursue fat loss and your calorie deficit was 1600 calories a day, if you worked in something like pizza, ice cream and cake, that would probably be your whole day. That would be 1600 calories. And most people would probably eat that like in the afternoon and then be like, fuck, I don't have any breakfast. I don't have anything else in my whole day. Very poor quality, very poor energy, hunger's probably shit, mood's probably shit, you probably can't go to the toilet. Like there's so many issues that will come with that. And that's where the food quality comes in. If we think about a 1600 calorie day where we have a moderate breakfast that's around 400 calories and a moderate lunch around 400, dinner around four or 500, we can fit in some snacks. We can then step back and be like, okay, this 1600 calories can actually be spread really well throughout my day. If we combine those two, We've had the 1600 cows where, like I said, this is just an example, but in this example, that is the amount we need for a person to achieve their goal. We've also then distributed that 1600 in a way that a person can actually have an enjoyable day of eating and then consistently feel good and implement that 1600 cows and continue working towards that goal. And if you've dabbled in Eat Like Ruby or Flexible Dieting or whatever, obviously you'll know this, but for complete beginners... What I really love to do and the thing I advise everyone to do is find the sweet spot with that. 
if you calculate your nutrition targets and your deficit to be 1600 or 1800, whatever it might be for you, we can really work towards finding a sweet spot where we can bring in foods and meals that you actually enjoy, that work for you in your day, that work for you in your schedule, that you're going to look forward to eating and then really like piece them in, track them into your day, have a look. How does that add up? How does it land? Do I have to remove anything, add anything, tweak anything, whatever, to make it actually fit with my targets and my numbers to align with my goal? But there is absolutely an overlap of the sweet spot where we can find the right quantity of food to work towards our goal. Good quality food to fill us up, provide good energy, create well-balanced days, tick all the healthy boxes. We know all the things. But then also little tweaks and really construct it in a way that does work for you and you enjoy it. If you're someone, let's just use an example. If you're someone who was working towards 1600 calories and you had three meals in there for 400 calories each, you could be like, you know what? I freaking love Tim Tams. My afternoon snack every day, two Tim Tams. Two Tim Tams is like not even 200 calories. It's fuck all. And if we've ticked so many boxes, like I said, of the quantity and the quality and all of those things, we can absolutely work that in. And if we think about that diet as a whole, if a person has the right amount of food to work towards their goal, they've got good quality food to support their health. And then they've got tweaks and little things in there like Tim Tams or whatever it is for you that makes you actually really enjoy it. Even if we think about the main meals, the 400 calorie meals, like I said, in the example, if you've got meals that you enjoy and flavors that you enjoy and you add a sauce that you enjoy or you add some cheese that you enjoy, whatever it is, if you do these little tweaks to actually make it enjoyable, you're looking at a day of breakfast, lunch and dinner that you're enjoying, snacks that you're enjoying, like I said, in an amount that's working for you and your goal. That shit is life-changing for the fourth time. (laughs) That is life-changing to create consistency. If we think about everything I've just said, We want to have a consistent calorie deficit in place to work towards fat loss. We want to have a consistent calorie surplus in place to work towards weight gain. Whatever your goal is, we need to consistently hit the requirements of that goal. And we know that the requirements are the amount of food. So if we think about the example, if you know that you need to eat 1600 calories a day on a consistent basis to progress towards your goal, it makes sense to plan out a 1600 calorie day that you enjoy and that you're going to stick to for the most part and you're going to look forward to for the most part so that you can actually consistently eat it every single day for weeks, for months, whatever. And obviously we flexible diet, we can change up meals, we can change up foods as we want to. That's a bit of a side note, but I will go there. You can absolutely plan one day and eat it for a whole fucking month if you want to, or you can plan a brand new day every day. And again, that's even a massive missing piece to so many diets. If you think about people that go onto really restrictive diets, usually it's one set of rules. Maybe it's one meal plan. It's a very black and white. These are the rules. If you don't stick to this, you're fucked. If we think about everything I've just said, the term flexible dieting is exactly what it sounds like. We can make our diet flexible enough while still hitting the requirements and eating in the amount that is required to progress towards our goal. But look at all of the little things, like I said, switching up meals, repeating meals if we want to, adding flavors, adding sauces, tweaking things, bringing in Tim Tams, take out the Tim Tams if we want, bring in an ice cream, whatever it is. If we can use the flexibility of flexible dieting in that way, while consistently eating the amount required to progress towards our goal, I feel like that is the biggest missing piece for so many people because they A, don't understand that it's an amount thing. Like fat loss will come down to the amount we're eating. Whereas most people are looking at what they're eating, which can absolutely serve purposes in other health ways. But when we're looking at the actual facts of weight loss and weight gain, it comes down to the amount. If you're only looking at food type and food quality, but you've got no regard for the amount you've literally missed the mark. You could eat, like I said, as well as you want, as healthy as you want. You've got the key fucking piece missing. (laughs) So coming back to my point, if we can nail that amount consistently over time and use, quote, flexible dieting to mix up the foods to make it enjoyable enough that we can nail the amount over time, that is the fucking sweet spot to me. That is awesome. That is just, like I said, life-changing. And I've said this in heaps of ways on the podcast before, but 
Once you've done this for a while, I advise everyone to do this for a while, unless there's a very clear reason not to. If you're someone that's had eating disorders or anything like that, obviously you fall outside the scope of just gen pop everyday people when we're talking about dieting. There's obviously a a very big factor there that you want to look at. But if there's no obvious reason that you shouldn't do this, I think everybody should have a phase of giving this a bit of attention tracking food, monitoring portion control, getting education, getting understanding, any or all of those things to actually truly understand what is required to achieve your goal. And if we look at that, if someone is willing to give like a 30 day window, let's say a month, you pick a month where you go, I'm going to fucking prioritize this shit. I'm going to really knuckle down and just track my food, monitor what I eat, record my food, weigh it, whatever you're doing to actually truly understand how much am I eating? How is that working out for me? Where does that fall in terms of a deficit maintenance? All of those things. If you can really give 30 days to that, and I mean like really give it, don't tap out on the weekends, don't have extra fucking snacks every night. If we think about all that, I've spoken about this in so many episodes before, but if there's lots of other little things coming in, you can't consistently, you can't say I've consistently eaten that amount and this is how it works for me. Because you're like, well, no, I haven't. I've actually had all these snacks and then I went out on the weekend and then I did this and I did that, whatever. If you can knuckle down on a window of just actually consistently implementing something and really assessing, okay, how much am I truly eating and how does my body respond to that intake? From there, you can really start to learn, okay, what would be required for me to achieve fat loss? What would be required for me to achieve maintenance? And side note, this is literally what we do in the fat loss phase. This is exactly what we teach in the fat loss phase. We navigate the first few weeks like this. In week four, we literally look at assessing and adjusting, assessing how that intake is working for you, adjusting it if we need to. And then we also look at things like eating out and training and how all of these other things factor in like there's obviously a lot of moving parts and that's why I freaking love the fat loss phase because we cover all of the moving parts of long-term fat loss that is really what I've designed it for to understand all of the different aspects of fat loss but the key number one aspect of fat loss is energy balance how much is coming in how much is going out that is actually the fundamental of fat loss if you can understand that for yourself you can, and if you can't come and eat like Ruby, join the fat loss phase, <laughs> we'll help you do it. But whatever you do, I always say, if, if you want to join eat like Ruby, I'd love to have you. But if you don't, take this advice and implement this for yourself for, like I said, 30 day window, really knuckle down, nail it, monitor everything and just gather that feedback for yourself. The feedback and the data is so informative for life. Let's say you actually calculate a deficit. And I always say this to the girls in the fat loss phase. Let's say you calculate your deficit. You think, yep, I've calculated my calorie deficit. I stick to that for 30 days. A few things are going to happen. Number one, you're achieving fat loss. We've hit the mark. You've calculated the deficit. It's effective. Happy days. Keep doing what you're doing until you achieve your goal. And then that's when we start to look at eating out and training and all of the other things that factor in, hence why we have a big fat loss phase, not just a fucking one day calculate your calories event. Um, But B, if you have calculated and nailed it and you aren't achieving fat loss, that is still so insanely informative to say, okay, I was very consistently eating X, Y, Z amount and I maintained. That is actual factual data that you can then say, okay, so that is my maintenance intake. Therefore, I need to reduce this intake to get fat loss moving. I'm going to side note because one of the biggest fucking issues I see with girls in the fat loss phase, like I have to call people in the fat loss phase out on this all the time, but then also just gen pop everybody I see doing this, not consistently hitting an intake for long enough to actually know how your body responds to it. So many people are so fucking keen for the quick fix and to rush the process and everything. And we see people literally a week and a half in being like, I'm going to change my calories. You cannot actually say this is how my body responds to this intake after nine fucking days, nine days, like get out. It's that's crazy. And one of the craziest things I see here is so many people will do all these crazy shit for years and maybe you just disregard nutrition and you go out every weekend and you drink and you eat and you do all these crazy things 
And then you knuckle down for nine days and you're like, poor me, I haven't got a result. It's nine fucking days. Like I dare you to give it a bit longer. And this is why in the fat loss phase, we do the assessing and adjusting in week four. Because if we've nailed three and a half weeks, we've actually got some consistency and some data that we can assess. We can't assess nine days of data. You can't stick to something for nine days and go, how did my body respond? Like as a human being, totally different topic, but we're going to have fluctuations and ups and downs and all of these things. We need to actually be able to step back on a long enough period and watch the overall trend in these things. We don't want to go, oh, my weight went up from Monday to Tuesday, change the whole fucking plan. And really, if you actually do that, I don't even mean any disrespect or any shame. The big thing that like comes up there is I would just say you're very lost and you're not sure what you're doing. If you literally watch what your weight does from Monday to Tuesday and then consider changing your whole plan, massive indicator that you need to really gain some education and some understanding of all this stuff. Step one, binge the Eat Like Ruby podcast. <laughs> binge all the fat loss episodes, binge the scale weight episode. If you still don't get it, join the Eat Like Ruby fat loss phase. But <laughs> honestly... If we think about what I was saying there, I went really far into the side note of people wanting to rush it. If you do rush it, if you get nine days in or two weeks in or whatever and you go, nah, fuck it, I'm changing the plan, this isn't working, you're now on day one again. You are now on day one again. And if you stick to that intake for seven days, nine days, 14 days, whatever, and then you go, nah, fuck it, I'm changing it again. You're now on day one again. For any time you pivot on a plan too soon, you're starting again. Stop starting again. I dare you to sit in three to four weeks, like no less than three weeks. That's the number one rule. You cannot look at an intake that you've been hitting for less than three weeks and ask if it's working or not. If someone asked me that as an educated professional, I've been doing this shit for 12 years, I would say there's there's not enough data for me to look at. Come back to me when you're in week four. So really catch that and really just tap into yourself and go, maybe I have had ups and downs. Maybe I've tried shit. Can I actually just give this four weeks? Can I just fucking give it four weeks? Stop rushing it. Stop cock blocking yourself. Stop chopping and changing, freaking out, whatever. Settle into something for just four weeks. What I was saying before I went way off is, like I said, if it if you've actually hit the mark and it's working, happy days, keep doing what you're doing. If it hasn't, you've got very, very informative, helpful data to tell us where your maintenance is and then to know, okay, I need to reduce that intake a little bit further. Let's just say, for example, you calculate your calorie deficit. It tells us that your deficit is 1,800. You nail 1,800 for four weeks, 1,800 calories every single day for four weeks. You don't see any fat loss progress in terms of peaks, weight and measurements whole nother topic, but not just weight alone, not just one thing alone. We want to actually assess multiple forms of data and really assess and say, okay, if I nailed this exact intake every day for four weeks, I look at multiple forms of data to assess how that intake worked for me. If it didn't, where I was going there is, if it hasn't, you can look and go, okay, cool. I need to eat lower than 1800 to progress towards my goal. People will see that and go, oh my God, but I stuck to something for four weeks and I didn't get anywhere. So fucking what? I'm going to just be a little bit rough for a second there. Heaven forbid you do something for four weeks and you've got to knuckle down and push a little bit harder for a little bit longer. If you don't like that, first of all, what I would say, what is the alternative? What is the alternative? If you, like I said, want to pivot at the two or three week mark, you're essentially on day one again. If you pivot again, you're on day one again. The more we pivot, the more we're back and forth, the more, or sorry, like the less data we can collect, the more lost we're going to be because we don't really have anything to step back and assess. So sorry to be harsh, but it just has to be said, we have to be okay with committing to something for a few weeks. Worst case, air quote, worst case scenario is that the feedback we gather from it is that it didn't get us the result that we want. That's still very helpful, very useful feedback to say, okay, cool. What do I need to do from here? And if you want me to answer that question, you can join the Eat Like Ruby Fat Loss Phase. <laughs> and I think at some point I was going in the direction, I don't even know if we got there, but I was going in the direction of once you have done this, let's say for 
a month or six weeks, however long you do it. But when you've done it for long enough to actually just be able to say, okay, cool, I'm getting an understanding of this stuff and I'm starting to see how it all applies to me and how I can make it work for me and my goals. This is where I think there's absolutely no right or wrong and people can make a personal decision to say, I really enjoy tracking food and following meal plans and weighing food and all these things. I'm going to keep doing it. Someone else might say, okay, cool. I've learned a lot from this. I want to take this information and try and apply it to my life without actually having to record it and track it and weigh it, etc. There is absolutely no right or wrong with this. I think we see some coaches that are very strict, like if people don't track, they don't fucking care and everyone has to track food and go really hard in that direction. And then we see the other people that are like, anyone who tracks food is obsessive and rah, 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 like make it like a really negative thing. I've personally had phases of tracking food very strictly for long times. I've then had phases of being really chilled with nutrition for long times. And to me, it's always done in a very positive way. I always feel very good about it. And obviously I'm very educated and probably a bit of, you know, a bit outside that like quote everyday person. But I've seen this just so many girls in Eat Like Ruby. I've got so many girls who love tracking food, have done it for a long time, maybe have some chilled phases where they loosen the reins a bit, maybe knuckle back down when they've got a fat loss goal. But again, that just brings me back to my point of when you know this stuff and you understand what is required to achieve any goal, you can actually make a conscious choice to pursue any goal at any time. You can say, hey, I do want to knuckle down on fat loss for summer and I know how to do so. Hey, I want to go off and enjoy a holiday and I know how to do so. And again, if we bring it back to eat like Ruby, I love to educate on, okay, cool. If you've done your assessment and you're starting to see where your deficit is and where your maintenance is, et cetera, this is how we then go off and enjoy meals out with that information. This is how we can have diet breaks with that information. This is how we can move away from tracking, knowing this information, but having the baseline fundamentals of nutrition, like having the knowledge of that really is the root of all those things. And even if you're in Eat Like Ruby, I would advise you to have a little think. If we were to do the assessing and adjusting in the first week, you would actually be like, what the fuck am I assessing? I've been doing this for three days. (laughs) And if we were to do the eating out call, like we do a whole live call where we talk all about eating out and navigating that. If we did that in week one or two, so much of the information I teach in that call, you wouldn't understand. You're like, I actually don't get this because I haven't been navigating nutrition long enough and learning this stuff long enough for this to actually make sense. And that's why the fat loss phase is very intentionally scheduled the way it is. We talk about different things at different times. As we get towards the end, we talk about diet breaks. We're not going to talk about diet breaks in week two. We've been on a diet for eight fucking days. So (laughs) it's just really important to understand that to dabble in other areas of nutrition with eating out diet breaks, like performance goals, muscle gain phases, any or all of these things, it'd be very hard to do those things without the foundation knowledge. And this is where I think it's even really cool for everyone to just clock and think, fuck, I actually do have that foundation knowledge. Like if you've been in Eat Like Ruby or you've been doing your own nutrition thing for a long time, really just tap in and think like, am I pretty solid with eating out? Would I know how to do a diet break if I wanted to? Would I know how to ease off my tracking if I wanted to? Could I pursue a performance goal if I wanted to? If you can do all of these things, that's a very fucking cool. And you wouldn't have been able to, I would argue that you wouldn't have been able to, had you have not had a consistent period in the beginning of learning about nutrition and learning about how to apply nutrition to yourself personally. For anyone who is in that beginner sort of lost energy and like I said at the start, just kind of fed up and not really sure what they're doing. If we think about everything I've just said, there are absolutely girls out there. I've worked with hundreds of them that have worked through everything I just advised you to work through and are now in a position where they can take their nutrition in any direction they want to go. And the very last thing I'll say here is that's not to say that every day is going to be perfect for the rest of our life. If you're someone who's ticked off those things, you might still have a day where you're a bit snacky or you overeat or you do move away from tracking for a while. And then you think, fuck, I went a little bit too far. I have to tighten things up again. But I've said this before and I could not believe, like, this is so true, this comment. When we do have a quote bad day or things don't go to plan and we kind of move in a direction that we weren't planning. 
there's a very big difference between an uneducated person that freaks out and is very negative and very frantic and very lost on how to fix that versus a person that has done the work and is educated and does think, oh, yep, fuck, okay, I went a little bit too hard, but I know exactly what to do about it. That shit is the life-changing shit. I've said it a million times and that is really the root of it. To be able to have the education, understanding, awareness, and then the confidence to say, okay, this is the position I'm in with my diet and my body composition, and this is the position I want to go or where I want to get to, and I know how to do so. That is literally everything. And what I was saying in my wrap up is if you don't feel like you're in that position right now, just know when I look at all these girls and I talk about all these girls that have been through Eat Like Ruby. And if you watch my Instagram stories, if you listen to the podcast I've done with clients, there is so much evidence that it can be done. And that's what I want people to know, because I think we can feel like I'm so lost. I'm never going to find the answers. I don't know what I'm doing. Literally use those people as your permission slip and as your evidence to think, fuck, it can be done. Because so many of those girls came to me in the position that you might be in right now, lost, frantic, I don't know what I'm doing, (laughs) where do I go from here, I've tried everything, I've got a lot of guilt, I've got restriction, I'm trying to eat good, all of the shit we talk about, I've seen it all, I've heard the craziest things from people that are getting started and to watch them actually implement everything I just said and navigate all of those things and get to a point where it's a very conscious choice about what they do next and they feel in control of their nutrition and their body composition and their health is literally a game changer. It is the fucking best. I love it. It's why I do what I do. I've literally just pulled this whole episode out of thin air because (laughs) this is truly what I believe in and what I love. Like I could not back this shit anymore because I just think it is awesome and Yeah, shout out to all of my girls in Eat Like Ruby that have transcended all of this stuff and are in an awesome position and full permission slip evidence, all those things I just said to the girls that might not be if you feel like you're lost, you're getting started, you've got a long road ahead, just know that it can be done. And if you want to come into Eat Like Ruby to navigate that road, I would fucking love to have you. I love to work through all of this stuff, like I said, in the fat loss phase and different programs. I just think it is very cool. It's very cool to see. And I'd love to have you. That is all from me today. Big juicy ep. Um, I'll be back next week. I don't actually know what next week's ep is about. So watch this space. We will see. But I would love, like always, to know if you got anything out of the episode. So share it on your stories. DM the podcast page. um, Tag Eat Like Ruby. Tag the Eat Like Ruby podcast. Give us a thumbs up. Five star rating review. All of the things. But like always, guys, I will be back next week. Thank you so much.